Hi all. Today we're going to talk about doing packet captures in a Cisco PIX and ASA. Um, I'll just start off by saying, um, you know, it, you can do a capture and then a capture name and hit enter. Um, just like that. But the thing here is you're capturing everything going through the box now, all traffic. And in a fairly busy box, there's going to be a lot of logs. Um, if you're trying to find specific traffic between hosts, for example, there's probably going to be too many logs to make it useful. It's just going to be frustrating. Um, so you you can use an access list. Um, probably 99% of the time I use an access list. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you here today as well. And uh, before we move further, then I'll, I'll also just point out that to remove a capture from the, from the uh, firewall, you can just do a no capture and then the capture name and then it's gone. That's how you remove it, right? Like you do a no on anything else. So we're going to start off by building an access list. Um, you can call it whatever you like. I'll just call it cap1. Um, we're going to permit because you want to see traffic as opposed to not see traffic. <clears throat> now here you can do as specific as you know the protocol and equal to port numbers. But if you're trying to figure out what's going on between two hosts, um, locking it down to the two hosts specifically is, you know, that's fairly specific. Um, so And that's generally speaking what I usually do. And then you can put in... Uh, uh, leave the full IP that way because you're just capturing between two hosts as opposed to uh, you know everything in the box so it's not that bad it's specific enough and um, we're going to capture between um, PC1 and pub1 over here PC1 and pub1 and that's what we have here PC1 to pub1 and then you'll want to throw in the uh, in the same ACL um, you want to see both directions so you you want to put another element in for a host pub1 to host PC one again because if uh, you know you only leave the the ACL in one direction you're only gonna you're only gonna see traffic in one direction you'll probably want to see if there's replies coming back right and I'm gonna go ahead and build another um, access list for <clears throat> the post net IP so you notice I put the pre net IP for um, PC one is 10 10 10 10 I'm gonna put his post net IP and we're netting him to the um, firewall we're doing pat 100 100 100 dot one so I'm gonna go ahead and do access list uh, cap two Permit IP from host 101.1 to pub1. And again, we want to do it in both directions. Cap2. Okay, so now how you apply these is you got to you apply the captures per interface. So we're going to do a capture. And we can you can call the capture whatever you want. I'm going to call them cap in for the one that we're going to apply to the inside, cap out for the one we're going to apply to the outside, just so I know when I'm doing a show capture, uh, it's easy to remember uh, which one is applied to which interface, right? So I'm going to call them capture, cap in, access list we made with the pre net IP cap one, interface inside. And then we'll go ahead and do capture, cap out, access list. Cap2, because that has the post NAT IP for PC1 <clears throat> interface outside. And if you do a show capture, then the capture name, cap in. We know no cat no uh, packets capture because we haven't sent any traffic yet. And cap out, no package capture, which is fine. So we're gonna jump over to PC1. <clears throat> we're gonna do a telnet to uh, oops connection to pub one, <clears throat> excuse me, on port 80. Oh gosh, there you go. Port 80, and we got an open connection. If we do show capture cap out, we can see pub1's post not IP connecting to pub1 on port 80 with a sin. Uh, pub1's replying back with a sin ACK, and then an ACK to finish the TCP three way handshake from PC1. And if we come back here and hit a few enters, we do show cap out again. Now we see a bunch of pushes, so there's data. And if we break the connection, <clears throat> excuse me, and do a show cap out, you can see the fins to finish up the connection. And if we do a show capture cap in, we see the same thing, but now we're seeing the pre net IPs. So we're seeing the real IPs of PC1 talking to Pub1, Pub1 talking to back to P talking back to PC1. And at the end here's our fins. At the top would be our sin, synac and act. Um so to just clear the buffer if you do a clear capture cap in clear capture cap out 
And then if you do show capture, cap in, no packets captured, cap out, no packets. So that's how you clear the buffer to start over again. Um, <clears throat> you can do, um, you know, when you do your show, you can do show capture, cap in, um, detail. And you'll get, <laughs> I should have done it before I clear the buffer, right? Um, but you'll get more information then. That you'll get like uh, um, TTL and stuff like that you'll be able to see. Um, there's a lot more um, options actually when you create your capture too. Like if we do, if we create one called capture test um, and just do a question mark. So you can create the access list like, access list like we did. You can create the buffer, uh, which just fills up a buffer to a certain length. Um, you can you can configure the buffer size as well. It'll fill up and stop. Circular buffer will just re you know overwrite the buffer once it's full. Real time will uh, bring the packets right to the screen, so you don't have to do a show capture. It'll just always be there. And, there, and there's a bunch of uh, um, commands you can do. You can add to uh, different switches and keywords. You can add to the capture. Um, so I'm going to show you the basics, um, and then you can go ahead, go ahead and explore with it and try it out. It's a it's a really good tool to have in your tool belt. Um, so, for example, you know, when, when we were looking here, we, we could have said to, uh, you know, if a user says, oh, I'm having problems connecting uh, to my web server, seems to be there, I can ping it, but uh, I can't connect to it. Um, and say we're looking at this cap in. We had the user at uh, PC1 make a connection to uh, um, Pub1. And from this, we could tell them, well, we see this, you know, we see you getting there and we see traffic coming back. Are you sure there's nothing wrong with your browser? Or let's say we saw um, only from PC1 going out, we never saw any replies from Pub1. So then we came and had a look at our um, our capture on the outside interface. And let's say again we saw the PostNet IP of PC1 talking to to uh, um, going towards uh, Pub1 and just sin 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 going out, but we never saw again replies coming from Pub1 back. We could say, hey, um, can you just talk to the application vendor? It looks like you're getting through the firewall. I see you coming in the inside interface. I see you going out the outside interface. I never see any replies back from the server. Have, have an investigation on that end of things see what's going on there um, the last thing I'll show you is um, you can do a you can download the captures in a PCAP format and then you can view them on uh, in like a Wireshark for example right if you're not familiar with Wireshark um, download it it's free it's a great program it's a very good program and how you get them out of the ASA is you have to do HTTPS colon slash slash and you're doing this in your web browser right not in the not in the ASA go to your web browser put this in the address bar um, you put the IP address of your PIX or your ASA so x.x.x.x slash capture slash the capture name we had one called cap in slash pcap that's it put that in your browser make sure the HTTP server is running of course on your uh, on your ASA um, you can download the libcap file load it into Wireshark and you can really have a good look at uh, at the packet. So if you're going to capture like everything as opposed to with an access list or you're doing an access list but it's between two subnets and there's lots of traffic and you're trying to weed through it, it's probably a better idea to just download the libcap and load it into Wireshark because then you can, uh, you can filter in Wireshark a lot easier. Um, I think they covered all the basics. If you have any questions, any comments, leave them on YouTube and I'll do my best to get back to you. But uh, play around with the packet capture. It really is a handy tool. And uh, have fun with it. Thanks for watching.